Okay, we're going to look today at making a simple animation in Edge Animate. Um, we're going to make a bouncing ball using some of our 12 principles of animation, um, the squash and stretch, the main one, and we'll do some easing in and easing out. Now, before we begin in Edge Animate, you need to have a folder created. With inside that folder, you're going to have an images folder. With inside your images, I have a PNG file of a ball made in Illustrator. Um, we need to work when working at Edge Animate in these folders um, because by nature Edge Animate outputs a lot of files when we export. So we need to have them and put them all in this nice folder for us. So to begin in Edge Animate, we open, we're going to create a new file. And here we go. We're inside the interface of Edge Animate. Make as much room as we can. Okay. In the middle is our stage, okay, underneath it is our timeline, okay, up to the right hand corner are elements, okay, and our library here for all our assets, we're just going to have an image today. On the left hand side is where all our properties are, at the moment they're just the properties as you can see for the stage, so I'm going to first of all begin by increasing the size of my stage to 1024 pixels by 768 pixels. Here I can change the background colour of my stage if I want to just by clicking on that white square. I could make it a blue colour, any colour I want. Anywhere in our properties, next to any of our properties, you will see these little diamond shapes. That When you mouse over them, they go this yellowy orange colour. Okay, That is where we set a keyframe. So quite simply, I can set a keyframe for my background colour to be blue. And the rule of thumb with Edge Animate is move your bar along the timeline first before you make any changes. Then I may just change it to red. And it will now animate between blue and red. Hit the space bar to test it or you can grab the bar and scrub it yourself there. Making sure these two buttons are turned on, the auto keyframe Okay, and the auto tween. Okay, they're the things we want to have on. Okay, I shall just delete them. Okay, to make our animation, we need to import our images into the library. So on the right hand side there in my library panel, if I click on the plus next to the images, I can then browse to my folder and grab the image I would like. And there it is, the ball. The ball PNG is now sitting with inside my library, that's all. Now to work with it on the screen, on the stage, all I need to do is drag the ball from the library and drop it onto the stage. And there it is. Edge Animate has smart guides turned on at the moment so that I can centre it up beautifully. Now I'm going to start by animating this from off the screen. So I'm going to move the ball up off the top of the stage. So I'm even going to drag some guides in, which will help me as I animate this. And there's its baseline. Okay, so before we can animate this ball, we're going to make it bounce. We need to let Edge Animate know that this is where the ball starts from. So we need to set a keyframe. The only time we actually control the animation is by setting keyframes. Um, Adobe Edge Animate will magically tween in between for us between our keyframes. So we need to tell it where it is at the moment. So we can just give it either a global position, okay, okay, so we've told it where it is. It's left and top. So it's left 420 pixels, so it's moved in 420 pixels from here, okay, and it's top minus 187 pixels, which means it's moved up across the top. Now, to make this ball move from the top of the, the stage to the bottom of the stage, I need to move my timeline first. And maybe let's do one and a half seconds. If at any point you need to zoom in and out of your timeline, that is down in the bottom right hand corner with these mountains. Okay, I move right in, so I'm now at much zoomed in on my seconds. So if I zoom right out, we end up in five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20. 
and so on. So let's get back into about three quarters. I can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then all I need to do is drag my ball down to the bottom. If I hold my shift key, it'll go down in a straight line. Okay, and then we can just test that. And there he goes. If we need to test that in a browser just to see what it looks like, we do command return. And it will open it in Firefox for us or whatever other internet browser you're using. And there it is. Okay. I think that might be a bit slow. So at any point we can click the keyframe and I can drag it back to where I want it. Okay, remembering to move the bar. It's now going to run in a second. It's going to run faster. Excellent. Now, I'm going to zoom in on my timeline so I can see a little bit more what I'm doing. I'm going to move. Okay. Before I move the bar, I'm going to slip my object and I'm going to set its width and height in here as a keyframe because I'm going to squash it in a minute and squeeze it. And I'm going to move it along just a little bit. And I'm going to drag it down to squash it. Now, if anything squashes, it must also stretch. Okay, and now I can move it back into the center. And then I'm going to move my timeline along, my bar on the timeline, about the same amount again. And this time, I'm going to resize it to its original sizes which I can type here if I know what they were, and they were 184 by 187. And then put the ball back where it belongs in the middle. And now it should squish down. And then I'm going to move my timeline up to about one and three quarter seconds, 1.7-ish. And I'm going to move my ball, holding my shift key, back up to about three quarters. There it goes, it's bounced down. Then we're going to move the timeline again. Let's zoom out a little bit at this stage. Let's go to about 2.4-ish which is about the same amount again. And we're going to drag it back to the bottom. And now we're going to repeat our process. Okay, we're going to let it know that it's we're going to hit the keyframes for the width and the height again. Then we're going to move our bar along a tiny bit. And then we're going to squash it down again. Stretch it out again. And then move my timeline on another tiny notch. And then reset my ball to its original height. 184, 187 is mine. Put him back in his right spot. Okay. And here it comes down, up, down. Now, as you can see at the moment, it runs at a very smooth pace. We need to add some easing in and easing out onto this so that it slows as it reaches the apex of its curve. So we're going to go back to the very beginning with our with our bar on our timeline. Now, when it drop initially drops to the baseline, we're not going to add any easing in or easing out. But as it comes back up, we want it to slow as it comes back up. So we, need to, we want to select this portion here of the animation. So if we just click on that section, you see it gets a yellow border around it. It's now selected. If we then right click over it, the very top thing on the menu is easing. We're going to, usually get this wrong, ease out. And we'll leave it on quad, which is the standard. But as you see, we can change it to make it more extreme, okay, or less extreme. So quad. And then what we want to do on the way back down, 
So click on the next section in your timeline as we want to ease in. And we'll leave that on quad two. So let's just check that out and see whether I got that the right way around. I did. Excellent. So as you can see, when we play that, it slows as it reaches the apex. Now all we need to do for this animation now is just to continue along the timeline going a little less each time moving the ball up a little less each time okay and continuing through our process until you have as many bounces as you would like each bounce should be getting slightly smaller so I shall just add an easing out add an easing in Let's just check that out. Okay, and you just need to continue that. Um, as many bounces are getting less and less until it finishes and the ball is static. Remembering that the ball never would stop completely dead in one go. It may do a little bit of a wobble as that secondary action. Now, to save this file, it's quite a simple command S or file save. Okay, it will save it as an HTML file. So let's put that into my folder, bouncing ball. Okay, and then if I test that again, what you will now see with inside my bouncing ball folder is all of these files it saved. This is the edge animate file, the AN file, which is like a PSD file, an AI file, it's your working file. This is the HTML file that it's converted it to. Um, and it has written all this extra JavaScript um, and even more in there. Okay, that's how to do a 